Okay, and welcome back. So what we're going to be doing today um, is we're going to make it so that we can go up to our little friendo here, uh, click a button, and we have dialogue and then also choices. And these choices will branch. So we have two options. We could do don't be rude. And either way, don't be rude gets a, a different response, but they still take you to the same output. Uh, we can ask about, say, the cave, go back, and now we can ask about something else. So about the town. We can ask about the lake, and now they're asking us to go on a little quest for them. You can say yes or no, and it kind of branches from there. Um, about the monsters, and then we can leave the dialogue. And there we go. That's what we're going to be covering today. So let's stick around, and let's jump right in. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's been a minute again, I know. Uh, I hope everybody has been well and safe and healthy wherever you are. Um, it's been a very strange time. I 100% thought I would have more time with uh, everything that's going on right now. Here's the compressor I use, the virtual compressor I use. Uh, but I ended up having a little bit less time. But we're in the last week of school. No face cam today because I left it at school because I've been teaching my lessons from school virtually, but uh, yeah. So let's dive in here. Now let's talk about where we left off last time. So currently the way I have this set up, I can walk over to this NPC that I created. And if I enter the NPC's interaction area and press my check button, it's going to activate the canvas. That and setting it up so that it actually uh, understands what the the dialogue should be. And those are the, the two things that we kind of went through here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make this actually work to create new dialogues from our ink script and add them onto there. So let's uh, dive right into that and get started here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at our prefabs here. Inside of our prefabs in the UI stuff, I have two specific prefabs I want to look at. We have our dialogue text prefab, and then we have our response prefab. Both of these are going to need to have a script on them to interface with the text so that the script can tell the text what text it needs to have. So to do that, I'm going to go into my uh, scripts folder down here, and I'm going to create a few new scripts under my UI folder. The first one is going to be, um, we'll call this dialogue object and then we'll create another one for the button so we'll create a C sharp script and we'll call this one ah, I hate it when that happens is it gonna nope now I just need to delete this apparently awesome unity's been doing this a lot on me lately I'm not quite sure why Okay, so now let's create a new C sharp script. I'll call this one button object. Is it gonna do it to me again? Good lord. How many how many times am I gonna need to try this out? I don't know what processes I have running in the background that are making Unity freak out like this. There we go. Response object. And then let's delete this new behavior script right there. And let's open both of these up in Visual Studio. Now, for the first time in a long time, my Visual Studio is actually already open. So that's good. Um, okay, so we've got our response and dialogue object. So a few things we need to do here. Uh, we'll start with the dialogue object. We want to have a method that sets this up so that it can then set what the text is going to be based on what the uh, branching dialogue controller sends it. So I'm going to create a reference to Text Mesh Pro. So I'm using TM Pro. If you're using the regular Unity text, this needs to be UnityEngine.UI. And then I'm going to create a new method here. I'm going to call this setup. And this is going to need to take in a few different things. First, it's going to need to take in uh, 
an actual string. So we'll call this string new dialog. And that's all this is going to need to take in, which is good. I need to have a reference to the text mesh pro object. So I'm going to do that here. We'll make a serialized field. We'll call this private um, text mesh pro u GUI. And we'll call this my text. And then in the setup method here, we'll set our my text dot text equal to the new dialog. All right, cool. Now for the button, it's going to be something similar. So similar, in fact, I'm going to just grab this setup function. And this is going to require a, another argument, though. And that's because when we make a choice, we want our button to be able to take that choice with it. So I'm just copying and pasting these parts that have to do with Text Mesh Pro because I'm feeling a little lazy here today. All right, there we go. Now, oh yeah, these voids need to be public as well so that we can access them when we're creating the objects. All right, now for the response object, we need a string for the new dialog, but we also need an integer for, let's call this my choice. And then, <laughs> all right, so let's also make a variable for that choice. Private integer value, and we'll call this choice value. Just default that to, oops, leave it as it is. And we'll also set, choice value equal to my choice. All right, cool. Now, there's some stuff that we need to do in the uh, actual Unity editor here to make these work the way we want them to. So currently I'm in the um, response button prefab. So in here, I grab my response button. This is gonna get the response object script, which is gonna need to know what the text is. So we'll just grab the text mesh pro and I'm going to do something similar with the dialog text. So the dialog text, I'm going to go to my scripts that I just created. I've got my response object. I'm going to pull that on and this needs to know the text. That. All right, cool. Now in our dialog or branching dialog controller, we have a uh, enable canvas method that just sets that canvas to be uh, active. What we want to do also is we want to create a new ink uh, story object that we're going to be controlling um, through this uh, through this script and that ink story object is going to deal with all of the heavy lifting of the branching dialog. So what I want to do first is create a public void and we'll call this set story and this is going to require that we have the ink runtime using ink dot runtime all right cool so now when we set our story what we want to do is uh, we want to create a serialized field here for that all this Story, my story. Story is an ink class. You can see as I hover over this that it's an ink runtime story. Uh, in set story, I want to check to make sure that there is a dialog value. And if there is a dialog value, then I want to create a story out of that dialog value. So let's do that here. So in my set story, I want to check to see if dialog value dot value. So if it exists, then I want to set the story. So my story equals a new ink story that we're going to create from dialog value dot value. So we're 
creating that. Oh, and we have to specifically say it's a text. All right, cool. Now, um, I'm gonna add an else condition here and we'll just do a debug statement. Thing went on with the story setup, we'll call it. Nice and descriptive debug statement. I have a tendency to struggle with making nice descriptive debug statements. All right, cool. And we want to set the story after we enable the canvas. Now, the next thing I wanna do is create a new function to refresh the view. So I'm gonna call this public void fresh view, All right? And then from refresh view, what I wanna do is I wanna break down exactly what's happening with the dialogue and do a few separate steps. We want to add dialog objects as required, and we want to add buttons as required. When we add the buttons, we want to delete any buttons that were there, but I'm going to leave all the dialog that was there because I don't want the dialog to be deleted. Or yeah, I want to have like a, a running tally of everything that's been said in the conversation, which is pretty common in Western RPGs. So what I want to do here is I'm going to make a new method specifically to make a dialog. Call this make new dialog and this is going to need to know a string that it's using to make the new dialog then i want to instantiate that dialog and the parent i'm going to instantiate it at is going to be my dialog holder which i'm pretty sure i set up nope i haven't done that yet so i need to tell it where um exactly where I'm going to be creating that. And in Unity, uh, if I take a look at my dialog canvas here, when I'm talking about creating that, what I want to do is not just have the panel, but inside the panel, I created a dialog scroll. And inside the scroll, it's the content that needs to be the, the parent. It's this object right here. So back to Visual Studio, let's make a field and this just needs to be a game object I don't have to take it as a scroll container I'm gonna call it the dialog holder I'm gonna make another one for the uh, choices while I'm here all this choice holder all right so down in my make new dialog I need to instantiate a new dialog, but because I want to be able to change using that setup method, I need to instantiate it as a dialog object. So to do that, I'm going to say, but I, I call it dialog object. Yeah, dialog object. And I'm just going to call this one, I don't know, new dialog is equal to instantiated version of my dialog prefab. Yep. This is what happens when you come back to a project after weeks of helping kids do their algebra. <laughs> um, okay, so dialog prefab, and then I want to give it a parent. Parent is going to be the dialog holder. Dot get. Oh, it needs to be dialog holder dot transform because it's not the object, it's the a component log object so that I'm getting the dialog object from that uh, new object. Oh, I'm already using new dialog. Good lord. We'll call this new dialog object. I'm wondering what's going on with that. Let's bring this down so that I can read it a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. Now, what I want to do is take my new dialog object dot setup, and I want to pass in my new dialog to the setup. Cool. So that's going to be part of refreshing the view is to make a new dialog. But I can't just call make new dialog. I need to check to see if the story can continue. 
So I'm going to say, wow, story, meaning that story that I just created. So my story dot can continue. It's just a variable of it, whether or not there are choices left to make. And then I want to make a new dialogue. And the dialogue I'm going to make is story dot continue. So my story dot continue uh, just creates a string, which is the continuation of the story for one line of content. If possible, if you're not sure there's more content available, you want to check whether you're at a choice or at the end of the story, you should call can continue, which is why I did that before calling this function. All right, so this is going to be a refresh view. We enable the canvas, we want to set the story, and we want to refresh the view. All right, now if I go back into Unity, we should be able to see the dialogues start to be created. There's a few things I'm going to need to set, though, before I go any further on my canvas here. I need to tell it what the dialogue holder is, which is the dialogue content, and the response holder, which is the response content. All right, cool. Let's have this dialogue canvas. The whole canvas, I think I had the whole canvas inactive by default. So let's try this out here. So I'm going to go over, and this is going to be the real test here. I promise I won't cut if I make a mistake. All right, so we got our new text, but for some reason, object is not set to a reference of an object. So where is that at? Make new dialog. Branching dialog controller line 59. So which part is not set to an instance of an object? Created the dialog prefab. Sent. So it's line 59, which is coming from 51, which is coming from 32. So the issue is it's not finding the dialog object on my prefab. So if I go back to my prefab here, dialog prefab, this response object, oh, that's why. So I called this a dialog object. It needs to be a, no, no, dialog object, but I must have put the wrong script. I did. On my dialog prefab, I put the response object. So let's remove this component. Let's put the right script on here. He told you I wasn't going to cut if I made a mistake. Hey, hey, get on there. So now it's dialog object, and I need to give it its text. And let's go back to the script and make sure it's correct. Yeah, dialog object. All right, let's save that. And let's go back to our game here. And let's try this again. If it doesn't work this time, I might cut, but <laughs> I'll let you know what I do to fix it afterwards. So over here, sweet, what do you want? We don't have any of our choices in here, and if I walk away, like nothing happens, uh, but we're going to get to that. Now, I want to be able to add the choices, so I'm going to make a new uh, function to create choices. So we're going to do void make new choices. And make new choices is going to have to do a few things. First, it's going to need to go through and disable, or destroy rather, all the buttons. So we're going to go for i equal to 0. Let's scroll down so you guys can see that. i is less than. Call it question holder. What did I call it? Um, yeah, choice holder. Good lord. Choice holder dot transform dot get child count. So we want to go through all the children, uh, increasing each time. Um, what's wrong with me doing that? 
int and method group. Oh, get child count is a function. That's why. Oh, and now it's still wrong. Just remember that get child count is obsolete. Use transform.child count. Oh, okay. Okay, and that's not a function, that's why. Okay, that makes more sense. Now what I want to do is destroy. So destroy form dot needs get yeah, get child I and let's destroy the game object part. This isn't necessary technically, but I like doing it anyway. So we're going to destroy all the questions and then we want to make new ones. So we're going to do four and I equals zero. I is less than story dot. So the number of current choices is current choices and the current choices is the actual list of all the strings that the choices have. So I want to do dot count plus plus. So I'm going over all the current choices. I created an error here. There we go. Fix that. Uh, so what I want to do then is pretty much the same thing I did with make dialog, only I want to do it with uh, make new response. So let's do void make new response. And this is going to require a string. We'll just call it new dialog again and an integer which I'm going to call choice value. Cool. Now in make new response, uh, I'm going to call that first. So what I want to do is new response, and I want to give it the text from the story's current choices. So we'll give it my story dot current choices. And like I said, this is a list. So I want to grab the I choice, which is where we're currently at. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, however many that text, and that'll give it to it as a text for the string. And then for the integer choice value, I'm just going to give it I. And that choice value is going to get to be important in just a minute. We're going to do make new choices as part of refreshing the view as well. But I only want to make new choices if there are choices to make. So while we're continuing, we're making that dialog. And then we're going to say if my story dot current choices dot count is greater than zero, meaning if there are choices, then I want to make new res or not make new response. What did I call it? Make new choices. Cool. Um, all right, and then if all of this is done, if we don't have any choices to make, then I want to set the canvas to be inactive. So I'm just going to grab my branch and canvas, just copy that. And then set this to be false. Cool. All right, now back down here, let's actually make this response work and then we can test this out. So just like before, I need to instantiate it as not a dialogue object this time, but a response object. So this is going to be a response object. I'm going to call it new response object. And instead of instantiating the dialogue prefab, I'm going to instantiate the choice prefab. And instead of in the dialogue holder, it's going to be at the choice holder. And instead of get component dialog object, it's going to be get component response object. And then calling it here, this needs to be a new response object. And I need to also send 
choice value. And I'll explain what that choice value does here in just a moment. All right, so that looks okay so far. Let's jump back into Unity here. Let's hit play. And let's test this out. All right, so I don't know why I didn't just put the NPC right next to the player or just put my player right next to the NPC. I don't know why I didn't do that. Your guess is as good as mine. What do you want? Hello, don't be rude. Now, I can click these all I want. They're not going to do anything, but I want to show you uh, exactly what's happening here with that choice value. So if we take a look at our response content, we've got our response buttons. Uh, let's make this so that we can look at the debug so that we can see all the, the hidden values. So currently, this has a choice value of zero, and this one has a choice value of one. The reason those are important is since these are buttons, I want to make it so that when I click on it, it goes back to the dialog canvas and tells the dialog canvas to choose a choice index, which is how Ink has it set up, which is kind of an awkward wording of it. And then the choice index is going to be whatever uh, this choice value is that I just passed to them. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, I need to do something I haven't really done with this before, and that is setting up a delicate. So let's do that. Okay, so heading back into our script here, and when we're creating the button, I also want to get uh, some button information. So let's grab that. Um, in order to get button stuff from Unity, I need to be using Unity's UI. So in my branching dialog controller, I'm going to add another using statement. I'm going to do using UnityEngine.UI. And then to do, or what I'm going to do with that is when we make a new response, I have a response object, but I also want to grab the button from that. So we're going to do button... I'm just going to call this response button equals new response object dot game object dot get component button. Now, it's not great to do a rigid connection like this, so I want to just double check really quickly here that I'm going to always have that button at the same level in my prefab as my response object script. So the button script is right here. The response object script is right here. So that should be good. But just in case, I'm going to add a check. So I'm going to say if response button. So if there is a response button script, or just a button script, then I want to do response button dot listener and did I spell that right? I did. Oh, because it, I have to do on click. So response button dot on click dot add listener. So what this is doing is in code, in button, this is the on click, and then these are the listeners. This is in code adding one dynamically because I don't know ahead of time if this is going to be button zero, button one, button two, button three. So I'm dynamically adding that on click listener. So I want to listen for um, a delegate. And now I need to tell it what function to use. Um, now, to do that, I'm going to make a new little function here. We're going to have to deal with that red for just a moment. Actually, I'll just add this here. And that should, yeah, that fixes the red. All right. So we're going to make a new function that's going to specifically allow the button to make a choice. So. This is going to need to be public because I'm going to need to, um, actually, it doesn't need to be public, but I need to be able to reference it from, okay, I'm going to check without it being public. So we'll do void um, choose choice. See, I made fun of ink a second ago, and now I'm doing the same thing. Um, and I want to give it specifically sorry I'm just thinking for a second so 
we'll give it an integer choice. I'm going to check this here and I might end up cutting this out. You guys might never see this. So what I want to do is my story dot choose choice index choice. And then after I do that, I want to refresh the view, which is why we've been setting everything in kind of its own little thingy thing. So when we refresh the view, now this choose choice is gray because it's not being used by anything. So in my uh, button here, in my delegate that I'm creating, I need to call that. So choose choice, and now I need to give it an integer value. And that integer value is the choice value that we've already decided. And because C-sharp is a little confusing sometimes, I need to have a semicolon in there. So this is creating a delegate, and what it's doing is it's essentially adding choose choice, choice value, whatever this integer choice value is, to that listener which is in the on click part of the button. All right, so I'm gonna save this and I think I might need to change this. Like I said, I might edit this part out depending on if I need to change that or not. But let's, let's give it a try. And again, I don't know why I put my, well, I know why I put my NBC over there because this is the town, that's where NBCs live. All right, so let's do, don't be rude. Okay, so we still have what do you want? And now I have a bunch of different choices here. So let's ask about the monsters. Now, this didn't immediately go down like I wanted to, so that's an issue that we'll have to fix. So what monsters? I don't see any monsters. And the answer, okay. Or you don't. Let's go back. So now the monsters choice is gone. I can ask about the cave. I know a few years ago, Caden's father tried to go fetch some treasure. He never came back. Go back. Let's ask about the town. Uh, what's going on in town right now? Now, what you can add is, like here, it could be player's name, colon, and then you can put all this in quotes. And then it could be NPC's name, colon, and you can put all this in quotes. And that's just a matter of changing the ink file itself. Let's go back. Let's ask about the lake. Lost my favorite bracelet there years ago. Would you go get it for me? Yes. And now the only option left is to leave. Continue. And now it's done. So. We're not setting the player to not be able to do anything, but let's fix that issue of the scroll container not going down. And the only way that I could figure out to do this, so in your refresh, you should be able to just tell your scroll container to go to the maximum value, as low as it possibly can. But if you do that, uh, it doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't load right away. And so it won't, it won't go right to where it's supposed to. I'll show you what it's gonna look like. So let's do, Serialize field. I already have the Unity Engine UI here, so let's do private scroll rect scroll view. And we'll call this um, dialog scroll. And after we do all the refresh stuff, let's set the dialog scroll dot. I think it's value. No, it's. I'm gonna have to look it up. Okay, <laughs> just a minute. Okay, it's vertical normalized position. I want to set that to scroll view does not contain. Is it supposed to be the scroll rect that I need to do this on? Yep. So I need to change this to be a scroll rect instead of a scroll view. Apologies. Cool. I, uh, I promise you I made notes on this, and my notes actually say scroll rect, but I thought I knew better. All right, so if we just set the normalized position to zero, that should knock it all the way down to the bottom but something kind of weird with it happens. Button in UI elements dot button. What?
Oh, oh, I don't want UI elements. That's, that's new. It's experimental. Okay, so let's give this a try here. And you can see what the issue is with just setting the scroll position to be the bottom when we're done with this. This is gonna be the longest video I've made in a long time. Apologies to you guys. All right, so what do we want? Let's do hello. I just wanted to say hi. Now you'll notice it doesn't need to scroll yet. Let's ask about the cave. So it didn't scroll down, but if I hit go back, oh hey, it's not doing that either. See how it's not, like this is zero and this is one. Um, it should be down there after we set it, but we have to put in like a, a coroutine with a really, really small pause. So I'm gonna make that coroutine right here. I'm gonna call this Lord. Some days I enumerator. And we'll call this role co. And I'm not going to hard code a value, I'm just gonna have it wait one frame. So we'll do yield return null, which waits one frame. And then we'll set the dialog scroll vertical position, all this stuff. So copy that and paste that here. Get rid of that from there. And then um, after we do all of that, we'll call this coroutine. So start coroutine, scroll co. All right, cool. So now if I go back in here, Okay, cool. If I hit play, we should see that scroll container go down to where it's supposed to be as we go through the dialog. All right, so rude. Huh, why is it not doing that, I wonder? Oh, good Lord, Mr. Taft. That's why this hasn't been working. There's a no <laughs> reference error down there. Some of you are probably screaming at me about that. Um, okay, so let's go to our dialog and let's tell it what the scroll is. Dialog scroll. All right. <laughs> sure. The F's in chat. If you were uh, if you were screaming at me about the null reference error at the bottom of the screen that I just wasn't paying attention to. Okay. So there we go. Now. About the lake. Lost my favorite bracelet there. No. Town. Go back. About the monsters. Right there. Go back. Leave. Continue. So I don't need to have that last choice for the continue. I could just have it when I click leave. I just have it in the dialog. And then when the dialog ends, we're back here. That's the end of the dialog. Now, it doesn't have them remember everything. And you'll notice here that, oh, all my dialog remained. So before we actually, one more thing, one last thing we'll do. When we're setting our story, we need to go through and delete all the old dialogues. So I'm going to make a new void delete old. I was going to say it doesn't remember. And that's something that we'll cover in the next video is saving these to another, a new JSON file. So we'll go delete old dialogues. And what I want to do is grab the just like I was grabbing the, I already have the dialog holder, good. So I'm gonna grab the dialog holder. So for int i equals zero, i is less than child count, just like I did with the button holder. Uh, I plus plus, I wanna just destroy it. Dot transform dot get child i that game object so i just want to destroy them and then when we do our set story before i even do this i'm just gonna delete old dialogues so yeah this is gonna be a long video it's been a while since i've done a super long one some people like the long videos some people do not i try to make them short so that not only does it help me in the algorithm, but um, it also helps with people 
you kind of want just something short and digestible. Continue. Um, cool. There we go. They don't remember any of the stuff that we said to them, so they're kind of dumb that way, which might be what you want for your NPC, but we'll cover how to do some kind of more complex things with ink to save that out in the next video here. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I wanted to talk really, really quickly about my Patreon before everybody left. Um, same thing as always, uh, give me a like if you learned something new, feel free to share the video with people you think might enjoy it, uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon, I'll just go nuts on those buttons. But uh, about my Patreon, I've had it on hold for a few months uh, because I wasn't creating content for a while there and I didn't want to charge anybody for something I felt like they weren't getting their, their money's worth on. And then the pandemic hit and I think I'm going to keep my Patreon on hold until the world is kind of in a, I don't know, a less precarious situation. So you guys can still add me on Patreon, whatnot. Um, I'm just not going to charge anybody on that website until things are kind of, I don't know, a little more steady. Uh, I personally am lucky enough to have a, a career that was pretty unaffected by this. Uh, so it seems kind of gross to be looking for Patreon money when I don't need it and I'm in a situation that's far luckier than I'm sure some of my viewers. So those of you who have been contributing on Patreon, thank you very much. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll reinstate it when I feel like things are a bit more stable for the world. So um, yeah, I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. <laughs>